aren't we supposed to be examples? I mean, don't we see the Apostle Paul saying, hey, follow me as I follow Christ? Don't we see people that are lifted up to be good examples unto the brethren that we can actually follow? So you can't just take, oh, everybody's a sinner, so you can't. No, that's not true. Everyone's a sinner, yes, but it doesn't mean you can't follow someone and, and try to pattern your life and use other people as an example of how to live. Obviously, Jesus Christ is the best example, but it is, there's nothing wrong with looking to men that are not hypocrites, that are living a godly, righteous life, that are living for the Lord and saying, you know what, I'm going to try to pattern my life a little bit after what they're doing because I can see that they're achieving a lot for God. I can see that they're really sold out. I can see that they are doing and not just saying. And you know, when people do what they teach, when people walk the walk that they talk, that has power in itself. That is, I've mentioned this before, that is the power that I saw when I went into Faithful Word Baptist Church, when it was just a tiny church meeting in, his, in Pastor Anderson's house. But I can see a man that not only was he preaching the truth, but I saw him walk the walk. I saw him go out and knock on the doors. I saw the way that he was with his family. I saw the, what he allowed into his house. I saw it firsthand. And I said, wow, praise God, someone who actually believes his word. Wow, that means something. I'm going to listen to this guy. I'm going to listen to what he has to say. I'm going to listen to his teaching and preaching because it's not just a bunch of words to him. It's not just religion to him. It's not just something he wants to check off a box. It's not just a position to fill. Oh, I'm going to work today and I'm going to pastor and I'm going to go home. No, it's reality. It's his life. It's my life. And hopefully it's your life too. But you get people these days online, they have no idea who you are. They don't watch what you do. They've never been to our church. They don't know what our church does. They don't know anything other than the soundbite that they saw on the news clip that made them upset and made them angry because they don't read their Bible for themselves or they don't believe the Bible. And then they want to go, you hypocrite. And it's the same people that go, oh, are you eating shellfish? <laughs> Do you wear mixed fabric? All the atheistic talking points. You know what makes me sick? What makes me sick, I, I don't mind when the atheists do it. Because they're fools. They're fools. The fool said in his heart, their heart, there is no God. So they come up with foolish arguments. I don't expect them to know the Bible. They have no clue what they're talking about. So when they bring up the, the, the changes that were made to the law, that are clearly spelled out in the New Testament, I don't expect them to know it. So I can just brush them off and be like, these guys are fools. They're idiots. But you know what bothers me? Is when you get so-called professing Christians that claim to read their Bible, that are going to church, that claim to be saved, making the same arguments that the atheists are making. And making a mockery out of God's law and judging God's law and saying, how dare you think that homosexuals ought to be put to death? How dare you think that they shouldn't? God's the one who said that they ought to be. Who do you think you are judging God's law? Oh, you're so mean and angry and bitter and hateful. Look, I just want to follow God's word. Oh, how love I thy law. Do you know how much God's law is exalted in the Bible? A multitude of times, plenty in the Old Testament, but also in the New Testament as well. You got, in, you got the longest chapter in the Bible dedicated to God's law. 